CoverJudger.com's The Hits, Episode 9, for the month of January 2016. This month, we read the story of a sentient semi-truck as it screams down a galactic highway. And old Mr. Nightlight gets smashed in the mouth with a hammer. But seriously, this is my favorite cover of the month, uh, Avengers number 3. The all-new, all-different Avengers, ANAD. Uh, we all know Alex Ross is brilliant, but this is an exceptional cover. The way he depicts the ANAD Avengers attacking Nova in the reflection of his helmet is spot on. Alright, let's get started with our first segment. We like to do first issues of the month. Uh, we pick a handful of first issues and determine whether you can jump right in and if we are going to continue reading the series. Colby, do you want to start off? Alright, my first one's A Force number one. Singularity goes looking for her friends, only to find they don't remember her at all and a new enemy has followed her. Uh, you can jump right in. Some Secret Wars history would help, but it's not crucial. And yeah, I'm gonna get the second issue. I'm gonna keep reading it. I will probably not, I didn't read Secret Wars, so I was a tiny bit out of the loop, but it was a good issue. Two out of three ain't bad! <clears throat> Alright, Nick, you're up. Next up, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. number one. More adventures from Coulson and team with the big names the TV series can't afford. You can jump right into this one as well. I think if you watch the show, you'll understand who the characters are already and have no problems. If you don't, eh, it might be a little shaky. This one didn't do it for me. Um, even with the additions of the big names like Iron Man, Captain America, I still just wasn't into it, even though I do enjoy the show quite a bit. I'm gonna get it. I love the show, and I like where this first issue left off. Uh, this falls in line more with A-Force. I will probably not be reading this book. <laughs> I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of the show, or I don't watch the show, so... The show's good! good. It's finally good. One out of three is terrible. Just Colby. All right, I have for my first one, American Monster number one. A hideous stranger appears in a small town riddled with crime. Can you jump in? Yes, it's the first issue. The story's completely new. Am I going to keep reading it? Probably not. It reminds me too much of Justin Jordan's uh, Dead Body Road, and I did not like that book that much. You know, I read the whole thing. I'm going to keep reading it. I thought the art was pretty cool, even though I don't even really remember what the story was about that much, because it was kind of blah. If Nick says issue two redeems itself, I might read it again, but for now I'm not going to keep reading it. That's a lot of pressure. You can handle it. Alright, Colby, next up. Next up, uh, Captain Marvel, number one. Carol takes a commanding position on the Alpha Flight space station and makes it more than a desk job. I think knowing the character would help, but not knowing the character, I thought it was fun to jump right in. Yep. Yep. Agreed. I think we're all in, all in agreement. Second issue? I'm gonna read it. I thought it was super fun. I'll give it one more chance. <laughs> three out of three! Captain Marvel! Pick it up. Dun, dun, dun. Next up, I've got a new image title called Cry Havoc. You can jump right in, brand new story. It is about a woman is sent to hunt down a monster because she may be a monster as well. Just... Despite my animated description of it, I thought it was dumb. I did not like it and it borrowed things from better books, in my opinion. Not gonna keep reading it. Um, I'm on the fence. I thought some of the art decisions did not go over well. I think the story can get better, so I am tentative, yes. I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, pretty much no. Seth? Devolution number one from Rick Remender. Mankind accidentally devolves itself in a barbarian wasteland is what's left for our heroine, Raja. It's sort of like Walking Dead with cavemen. Um, Murder cavemen. <laughs> Is it accessible? Yes, it's the first issue. Uh, the story is brand new. Uh, will I keep reading it? I think I'm on the same, on, along the same lines as Cry Havoc. On the fence, I'll give it another issue, but it was lukewarm for me. I thought this was way better than Cry Havoc, but very Rick remender -y for me, but I will keep reading it. I love you, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Makes 
makes sense. Yeah. What you got next, Colby? Next up is Legend of Wonder Woman. The mythological origin story of Diana is explored. Diana is Wonder Woman. Uh, is it accessible or right away? What? Can you jump right in? Yeah? Yeah, you can. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's an, an origin story. story yeah. It's an origin story. Um, Can you keep reading it? Yes. I like Wonder Woman. I'm not so happy with this first issue, but it did kind of redeem itself in the end. I wasn't into it. That's about it. Just wasn't that into it. I would not read it. I loved it. I think it was. It's a good compendium with uh, the new superhero, Superman, American Alien book. I think they're good counterbalances, and I think this one really did a great job of building mythology as well as starting off an interesting story. So I'm into it. Cool. Next up, I have Obi Wan and Anakin, a new Star Wars number one title from Marvel. This one's an intimate look at Obi-Wan's training of Anakin. So it's kind of episode between episode one and episode two, I'd say. Close to episode two. Closer to episode two because he's not, you know, eight. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, it was like right before episode two, if we're going to put it in chronology. Yeah, yeah, right before episode two. I'm not going to keep reading this. I did not like it at all. <sighs> Stop it, Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think story-wise, it was... Okay, I was not really into it. I think this is the first Star Wars book from the start that I'm not into, so I'm gonna go now as well. Next we have Old Man Logan number one. Uh, Secret Wars is over and Logan is stranded in Manhattan with a hit list. Is it accessible? Um, yes, I think that the title notwithstanding, I think it's accessible. But if you've read Old Man Logan by Mark Millar or the Secret Wars run that just finished by Brian Michael Bendis, you will be very much more in the know. Jumping into this might be a little scary for some people. It's amazing either way. You gonna um, keep reading it? Am I going to keep reading it? <laughs> I am. There it is. <laughs> there it is. What about you guys? I'm generally not a Jeff Lemire fan, and I was very hesitant going into I'm this. I'm a big Jeff Lemire fan. You like Jeff Lemire? And I thought this was brutal and awesome and very violent and dark for a Marvel title. Colby hated it. Moving on. It was fantastic. Prophet Earth War. This is uh, Prophet's final arc, and it starts off with a battle plan. You can jump right in because you're not going to understand Prophet no matter where you start <laughs> reading it. That's a good take on that. That is a very Perfect. good take on so that. You can jump right in. This uh, is an issue number one that's preceding issue like 47. It, it makes issue, no yeah. sense. The first issue of this Prophet run is number 21 after an early 90s 20, 20 issue run. The whole thing makes no sense. You can jump in. Or you cannot, it doesn't matter. Profit will still exist. Can you keep reading it? Yeah. Interesting. I love Profit. Profit is one of the first comic books that I started collecting again because it's so crazy it and nice. like stoner space nonsense. Like he gets to a new planet and just finds something to eat every time. Right? Yeah, I, mean, I love that. It's anything. It's not about a character, it's about an idea and a giant galaxy wide war that makes. No sense at all. I love it. I'm gonna keep reading it. And it's me. He's trying I am to not gonna keep reading it because I've got a lot of books on my plate. <laughs> and this nonsense, this book is just too difficult to wrap my head around. Maybe, maybe, if I just fall into some delirious state, maybe I'll read it and be enlightened. Seth, when you get a horrible cold and you've taken all of the Dayquil, Perfect time to pick up the first trade or Earth Wars number one because it makes sense. Drink all the Robotus. Yeah, get all roboed out and start Robo reading profit. And finally, we have Silver Surfer number one. Silver Surfer and Dawn investigate a threat that is stealing imagination from Earth. Can you jump right in? You can. I did. Um, apparently, if you have read The Secret Wars, and I think there's like two trades before this actual first issue. I think that would really help because who's Dawn? What's up with Silver Surfer? Why does he melt into a human? Anyway, am I gonna keep reading? Yeah, I really like this pop art style. I think it's um, a cool throwback. Not everyone agrees with me. I think that if every comic looks like this, I would hate this style, but since it's just this one with just this weird cosmic character, I'm into it. That's it for favorite first, and now on to 
Nick's favorite cover where Batman drowns in a field of flowers. This Gotham florist got a little too carried away. Batman number 48 was my favorite cover of January. Greg Capullo is crushing it on the art with Batman. I'm sad to see him go after issue 50 for a small little hiatus with King Douche Mark Millar. This one though, I don't know, it just, I love it. All the flowers, all the Batman. Did you see the tear, dude? Just the one tear. Bat tear. Rollers, <laughs> Everything about this cover is awesome. Next up, we are going to talk about our very favorite comics of January 2016. Um, the way we're going to do this is each of us has 30 seconds, and you're going to get straight up cut off if you keep going longer. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just kind of our fun way to explain something that requires much more explanation than we have time allotted to tell you. My very favorite comic of January 2016 was... Odyssey number nine, written by Matt Fraction, color and art by Christian Ward from Image Comics. Despite its intense nature, the subject material of this is very interesting to me. It covers Homer's The Odyssey, 1001 Arabian Nights, Moby Dick, the whole thing is gender bent and set in space. It makes no sense. It's written in prose. The art is melting my face, but this was Probably the most accessible issue I've read of it so far. I understood most of it and only had to read two articles Three, to get it. Two. Burr. Thanks. It's my favorite art. That's the best one you've done yet, I think. You think so, man? Yeah. Hey. What did you read, Seth? What was your favorite comic? My favorite comic of January 2016. Can you believe it? 2016. You know, bitch. Flies. You know. My favorite comic of the month is... Surprise, surprise. A book by Tom King. Who? No I don't one know. knows who that is. Tom or Todd? It's entitled... <laughs> it is Old titled... Tom King. The Omega Man, number eight. Uh, with, obviously, written by Tom King. Artist, art by Barnaby Bagenda, sorry Barnaby. Uh, <laughs> colors by Romulo Fajardo Jr., sorry Romulo. Um, yeah. You ready? On you DC. Ready? It is on DC. Ooh, ooh, ooh. <clears throat> you ready? Ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. And so we find out that in the past, an evil galaxy committee pillages this planet of rule to get their natural, re natural resources. And we find out that many of the characters we follow on this story have connected histories to this genocide. Um, there's a great two-page two spread in it that was <laughs> breathtaking. Uh, and this comic really solidifies the story. Perfect position for the final three issues. I finally understand it completely. What a great book. Boom! That was the best one you've ever done! Thanks, bud. Down to the wire. Colby, I can't wait to see the hot that. steaming mess Why that Colby is going to talk about now. That's a high bar, man. Yeah, yeah dude, it's a we, high we just killed it. Bar. It's what you say, not how much time you say it in. Oh my exact. god! 30 seconds exact. <laughs> just that so you guys know, just, right. just, so, just so all the audience knows, Colby <laughs> likes to read this off of his iPad, so and he's pictures. got a full blown book! <laughs> what is your favorite book of January 2016? As was previously hinted at. Old Man Malogan. Old Man Old Malogan. Man Malogan. <laughs> Old Man Malogan. <laughs> Old Man Malogan. Old Man Logan number He's one. He's the housekeeper at the Pinkney Bigfoot escape. Are we ready? <laughs> Don't start that out. Don't start that again. <laughs> so, so, Old Man Lo Old Man. <laughs> Get in, I'm too excited. <laughs> Old Man Logan number one is my favorite comic of the month. That's uh, Jeff Lemire, Andrea Sorrentino, and Marcelo Maiolo. That is the creative team behind this fantastic run. Marvel. Marvel. Are we ready? Are you? 
I think I am. Okay. There's a reason this issue is called Berserker. Here we find old man Logan, fresh out of battle world, naked and confused in the middle of Manhattan. If you remember correctly, She-Hulk wants him over the wall. I did say confused, right? All Logan can remember is all of the death and the rotting world from which he came and everything seemingly back the way it was before the rise of the villain is just not computing with Logan. We all know how Logan responds to confusion. Anyway, he finds some clothes, has some memories, so the battle world. <laughs> So the battle went on before villains rose. Then he decides about whether or not he's back in the battle. It's over. And it's going to prevent it from happening again. By slaughtering the villains before they can rise again. Um, for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> Second on the hit list though is good old Banner, and I can't wait to see Bruce and Logan talk it out in issue two. I felt bad saying that the art was great in mine. And you wrote like an extra. The art is fantastic. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Those are our favorite comics of January 2016. And one last favorite thing Seth's favorite cover of the month. Of the month. Well, it looks like we have here a novelization of Neko Atsume, the Japanese cat game. It's like an orange raccoon to me. <laughs> <laughs> From what you can see, my favorite cover of the month was <laughs> Tokyo Ghost, number five, cover B, by Sean Murphy and Dave McCraig. All I gotta say is, who doesn't love a big, bushy-tailed fox? <laughs> and, in the background... You should be dialing. <laughs> but maybe the thing I love most about this cover is the battle scene depicted in the background above sure. the waterfall. It is majestic and subtle, and I love it. Arc chat for God World, um, the latest arc from Rick Remender's Black Science. I'm going to ask these two some questions. I'm pretty sure they have different opinions about them. So, here we go. Grant has had a, secure, a circuitous route through the series with a potential breakthrough in previous arc. What makes this one necessary, or is it? Major spoilers for God World if, you, if you're not reading it. Nick, what do you, what do you think? Uh, I don't think it's necessary. After all of his like inner lookings and trying to redeem himself and saving everybody in the last arc, why is he now trying to like figure himself out even more when he theoretically did that in the last arc? Colby? I disagree. I think it's uh, he's been battling his demons the whole run. And this is just kind of a dream sequence where he kind of delves into who Grant is and we get to know who Grant is and where all of his doubts and insecurities came from. Maybe even Grant gets to know who Grant is. Exactly. I mean, a main point in this arc is the Olmec-like mountain head revealing the Freudian slant to Grant's life. Did you like the fact that he places his mother's rejection as a main influence in his adult mistakes? You can start. Uh, I did like it. I, he's obviously, you know, I can't remember where the Ungo, Lunga, whatever, where that started. I feel like it started before God World, but maybe it didn't. There's been undertones of this all along. It's a good, it's a good twist. Usually it's the dad, you know? So I'm kind of enjoying it. I thought uh, delving into memories as opposed to dimensions, but keeping it in the same sort of vein was smart. The personification of his inner thoughts being the giant statue thing was cool. Um, Storytelling-wise, I think it's it's not bad, and it goes along with the themes while still being different and sort of new for the series. All right, um, towards the end of this segment, the end of this issue could be the end of an arc. What do you expect from the last two issues, Nick? I have no idea, and I thought the end of the third issue was really dumb. The end of the third <laughs> issue was bizarre. Um, again, I think this is a dream sequence, so it's going to be Grant waking up and making sense of everything he just realized. Um, and then going forward, we don't know where he is. We don't know if he's way far away from the rest of the team or if he's, you know, if they're right outside the door. And he's just in a coma. We, we don't know. But if the revelation of this arc is that imagination fuels the beacon, that is fucking stupid. I really don't think that's going to be the Alright. Last and final question. Where would you rate these previous three issues in the series run? Worst. Worst. I think they're worst. 
I, I mean, I don't know worst is the right word. I, I, I like the rest of the run better, the, the, the storyline better, but I don't feel that this is non-essential. So when so you have worst. Fourth. <laughs> we, we all like the book. I thought yeah. this, would be, this would be a good arc to discuss because we all like the book. I think the last I don't know how happened. else we would have gotten Grant's inner thoughts. Yeah, and I'm in no way going to quit reading it. It's, it's, still, it's still good stuff, and the art is great. Although he could have done a Fear Agent thing where his thoughts are running parallel to all the action. And some of us haven't read Fear Agent, but thanks for ruining it. We should read Fear Agent. <laughs>try and do a, t a new top three every month the subject of which will change with each month and what we have for you today is the top three superhero movies of 2016 that you should be worried about that we're worried about and we are worried about we are worried about this is the number three movie that we are kind of worried about in 2016 and it's Deadpool comes out very soon. Yeah, um, release date is February twelfth, right around Valentine's Day. Uh, Two days before. Oh, it's like yeah. It's a Friday. It's a Friday, I think. So Sunday is Valentine's Day though. Write this stuff down Friday, later. Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Deadpool. Um, this is a Marvel comic being released by Fox because Deadpool falls into the mutant category, just like the X Men. My concerns with this movie. I have three. First, Tim Miller, the director. This is his first feature film. Uh, he has a background in visual effects, which I think is very awesome for a superhero movie. He did a lot of the effects on Scott Pilgrim versus the World movie. So he's definitely got an eye for pizzazz and the sort of thing that's going to be in Deadpool. But it's still his first feature film. Secondly, it's R-rated, and this is kind of the first new comic book movie that's going to have the R rating, and from the Red Band trailer, it's going to be filthy and just full of curse words and stuff that, as a teenager, I would really, really want to see, but realistically, my mom would not let me. And lastly, and not that worried about it, but one of the main characters <laughs> here is Mega Sonic Teenage Warhead. I did not know much about this character, but it seems that Tim Miller has been on record as saying he completely changed it because he just wanted to use the name Negasonic Teenage Warhead. And yes, that is a Monster Magnet song reference. Ugh. The Fox track record for superhero movies, while it's not as terrible as Sony, is not great. Um, I am excited to see T.J. Miller. He's one of, uh, one of my favorite comics, so I'm excited to see him in it. But aside from that, I'm very worried that this movie is going to be god awful. I think he's going to rock. I think uh, Ryan Reynolds has been waiting for this for years, and it's, it's going to be cool. One not concern, the okay. costume is spot on. Mm -hmm. It's one of the like most dead-on, perfect superhero costumes I've seen in a movie thus far. Also, I don't get that pull as a <laughs> phenomenon in general, so that's another don't reason. Worry, don't worry about what that says. Just I always <laughs> equate Deadpool to, if I were a teenager, I would think that this is an awesome superhero. Yeah. But as a 31-year-old, he is annoying. Why does he have swords when he has guns? The whole thing doesn't make sense. Go see Deadpool. <laughs> anyway, go see Deadpool. Our second most worried about movie is Doctor Strange. Um, coming out November 4th. It is in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So, why? Marvel can do no wrong, am I, am I right, Colby? Well, here, here's why I'm worried. I think they're great. I think the Marvel movies have been by far the best ones, so... Can't disagree with that. Here's why I'm worried about Doctor Strange. Um, a lot of people were worried about Guardians of the Galaxy. Those worries were unfounded. But this is a step even further from that, um, I guess they call it Phase 2, right? Um, with the intro introduction of magic as a key element to the Marvel, Marvel Cinematic Universe. The character is based heavily on lore. Um, which can be a problem, especially in an origin story. Um, and I think the setup may lead to even more uninteresting villains, because who really is excited about magic? I'm not. Um, I feel like visually ethereal planes can be ripe for disastrous visuals. That's one of my biggest worries. And the tone, where does this fit in? We've had movies that are very... Um, 
serious coming out. The Avengers and Civil War, I think, are serious. And we've had movies that are lighthearted, like Ant-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Tonally, I'm not sure where this one fits in. It could go either way. It's just going to be strange. It could just be strange. Yeah. strange. I think it's supposed to be strange. Or strange. Um, and a big thing, just to go along with the magic, Thor said in, in the first movie that magic is science we don't understand. They I think that could be a problem with Doctor Strange. What do you guys think? I'm excited about Doctor Strange. The cast looks amazing. Uh, the new Jason Aaron run of Doctor Strange on Marvel, the comic book, is one of my favorite Marvel comic books right now. And I am not very worried about it. I do share your opinion about magic being hard to work with. I didn't even think about ethereal planes being a visual, but it sounds like it could go either way, being very awesome or very hard to do. I'm excited about it. I love me some Benedict Cumberbatch. Cumberbatch, Edgio 4, Rachel McAdams is great. Michael Stol Stolberg is great. Mads Mikkelsen will probably be the villain. He's awesome. Tilda Swinton is incredible. And Benedict Wong is a new addition. And it's based on uh, Brian K. Vaughn run. There's a reason that some of the most powerful characters in the Marvel Universe are magical. Like, Scarlet Witch like breaks the Marvel Universe at one point because magic. I think your concern is very warranted, but because of the great cast yeah, would, and because be... because of the great cast, because of Marvel's track record, I think they're going to handle it pretty well. And I hope he, his uh, I hope his costume, his like cape, is like it is in Jason Aaron's right now. It's kind of two movies. Uh, DC as a whole, we're a little bit worried about your franchise and your moviedom. I'll talk briefly about Batman vs. Superman, Soups, and Suicide Squad. And it's going to be more in my 32nd. Style. Let's do it. Truth is, I'm just worried. I truly want the DC Movieverse to succeed, to be as good or better than Marvel, but Superman Returns, Jonah Hex, The Losers, Green Lantern. Batman has been a saving grace, and now Affleck just might ruin it. Not to mention the amount of character characters rumored to be thrown into both movies. I'm not sure how you can tie it all into a coherent plotline. And I mean that for both of them. Uh, Batman vs. Superman alone has Robin, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, The Flash, Lex Luthor, and Doomsday, plus others rumored. I know you're trying to set us up for Justice League, but how will all those cameos fly? I can only hope you save some of them for the credit roll. Suicide Squad has the Joker, Harley Quinn, Enchantress, Harley Quinn, sorry, Deadshot, Captain Boomerang, Batfleck, Katana, Killer Croc, El Diablo, Slipknot, King Shark, and Rick Flag, and more rumor. Yes, I said Batfleck. <laughs> he alone could kill the franchise. Proceed. That's all you're gonna say? That's all I got. Okay. I can't agree more. Way too many characters in both. Um, for Batman and Superman, there's too many heroes. And there's too many villains. Um, like he's, he listed off all the heroes. It's also rumored that Bizarro is going to be in it. It's rumored that, well, it's not rumored, Darkseid might make an appearance. And then Suicide Squad, it's just a huge ensemble cast, which could work. Uh, think of Guardians of the Galaxy, like a wacky bunch of people that don't get along trying to accomplish one goal. We've seen it work before, but there's nine or four. ten of them. There are right? four of them. Well, group. Counts. Group, so there's five sort of. But there's nine or ten of these guys, right? Yeah. It's so many, and there's a lot of star power behind it, which makes me also think that like their personalities might be overshadowing each other. And I think I loved the recent Superman, so and I'm a, I think I'm alone in that. Man of Steel. Man of Steel. Um, you are. But in the world. I don't disagree with you guys mostly at all, but I think Suicide Squad, there are very little stakes involved because Batman and Superman comes out well before. It's their, it's their uh, what do you call it, tentpole movie. Mm -hmm. It is very, very, very important that that movie does well. If Suicide, if Suicide Squad is good or bad, I think they can rebound from that pretty easily, especially if Batman and Superman is good. If Batman and Superman is good, Suicide, Suicide Squad can be terrible, and it won't matter. I don't think it's 
needs to be worried about because it's kind of just icing. It's, mm -hmm. you know. Depending on where they go. If Jared Batman and Superman is terrible, then it, there's more. What if Jared Leto fucks up the Joker? I doubt that's going to happen. It just, <laughs> I don't think it matters. I think, I think the makeup artists fucked up the Joker, <laughs> not Jared Leto. <laughs> if, if Batman and Superman is really bad, which it has the potential to be, I think, then there's a lot more pressure on Suicide Squad, but it's almost dependent on how, how the previous movie does, depending on her for how important it is. Sure. The thing I think that's important about Suicide Squad is showing is DC showing that they have the ability to make us want to see more of and introduce newer characters that no one's heard of. Captain Boomerang, Slipknot, <laughs> like a samurai Asian chick named Katana. I'm sorry, this is like it sounds dumb. I agree. But if they make it something that we care about. I mean, I thought the first Thor was going to be terrible, and it was only sort of terrible. Um, just to also, I did read I did read an interview with Zack Snyder, and he was saying you would be surprised how interconnected Batman versus Superman and Suicide Squad are plot wise. All right, that might be the case. I didn't mm -hmm. know that, but yeah, no, I just, still think it's not as important. But um, just to dissent on one other opinion, uh, Batman and Superman is based on Batman Returns. And there are a whole lot of characters in that book that don't play integral parts in the plot. So I feel like that could very well be the case with the movie, where they have cameos that add a little here or there, but aren't essential to the plot. That would actually be nice. Yeah. So one out of three, Colby is worried about. I'm worried about all of them. I'm worried about Deadpool just annoying me, honestly. And... I'm generally and genuinely worried about Batman vs. Superman being so overloaded and bloated that it sucks all the dicks. Alright, well that's our top three. <laughs> um, Deadpool, Doctor Strange, and then we've got Batman, Superman, and Suicide Squad. Go see them. All coming out this Let year. Let us know so what you think. Those are probably the biggest movies. What may the future hold? To finish off... Our January 2016 episode 9 of The Hits from CoverJudger.com. We are going to look into our crystal balls and sort of project a prediction about February. Doctor then in Strange, our next video... Doctor Strange style. Doctor, Doctor Strange. Strange style, how appropriate. Nice um, time. Totally strange. Totally strange. This video is totally strange. <laughs> uh, so in episode 10, when we start off, we are going to have a little segment called Hits and Misses. And basically discuss I was very wrong or very right about my prediction about a certain comic book in February and I'll kick it off it's coming out next Wednesday Doctor Strange it's number five it ends the first arc of Jason Aaron's new run on Doctor Strange it's been one of my favorite Marvel comics by far the art is great the tone of it is fun but weird it's totally fun it's totally strange I don't know there's not much more we can say about Doctor Strange today I feel like but I'm loving this Jason Aaron run, and I want to see how the first arc ends. I'm really excited about it. I think it's going to end strangely. For me, in February, I've got a couple things. First off, the saga cover next month is Bananas. It's so um, good. Let's check it out. It it's, looks awesome. Got our favorite characters. Yeah, it's probably our favorite um, characters. Spider-Man number one from Brian, Brian Michael Bendis uh, launches. But my pick is Emma Rios' Mirror, number one. Uh, it's an image comic that's coming out that I'm really looking forward to. Uh, the art from Emma Rios obviously looks great. It's not her on the art. The cover, though, is. The cover is, yeah. Mm. Goals! What are you thinking about? We know what you're going to pick. Bitch Planet number seven! I'm just super excited for the storyline to continue. Uh, don't get me wrong, I'm loving the character developments. I do wish we'd have gotten to know Mako before her. Spoiler. Spoiler, demise. But issue six worked and gave hints to the potential and vulnerabilities of the ship and that people in the general patriarchal shithead population might just be rooting for the bitch planet team more than we think. So prepare yourselves for presidential bitch part one. So we'll let you know next month whether bitch planet beats the shit out of... What Doctor Strange doing? number five. Thanks for not even paying attention to me. Strange. That's the hits. We're done. It's over. Thank you for watching. Leave some comments. Tell your friends. Let us know if we missed anything or if there's segments you want to see like Colby arm wrestling. 
his dog. Or some like found footage of a Pinkney Bigfoot wandering in the woods. Or me vomiting, I've already seen something. That almost happened. So yeah, blooper reels to come. Thanks for watching. Uh, stay non compliant. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Until <laughs> next time. Goodbye. Okay. The art is fantastic. <laughs>